All right, I'm going to call the um, Mashpee Public Schools School Committee um, regular meeting of February 3rd, 2016 to order. It's 6.34, um, which means I'm right on time for being late as usual. So with that, uh, first item of business is the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, first, first item of business is uh, public comment. Um, we have Nicole Bartlett, is that pronounced correctly? Thank you. Hi, thanks for allowing me to comment tonight. My name is Nicole Bartlett. I'm a Mashpee resident and a parent of two children in the Mashpee schools. I wanted to speak tonight on the ongoing investigation to superintendent's home visit. I know you've heard from folks with a long history or the, in the community or people who've worked with Mr. Hyde, and I'm here to provide what I think might be a different perspective. I'm not a lifelong Mashpee resident or of the Cape. My husband John and I moved here seven years ago when I accepted a new job. I don't know the King family and I've only known Mr. Hyde in his capacity as the superintendent of our school district. We chose to live in Mashpee because it was affordable, because it was small and safe and the community really appealed to us. But I have come to question that decision in the last four months and in particular the last several weeks have definitely lost confidence in our school administration and you, our elected school committee. Because of Mr. Hyde's actions, our school district has been mentioned repeatedly in the press. I've read a redacted copy of an investigative report involving our school superintendent. I've had to read again and again how poor our district has historically performed. And while I've noticed a lot of positive things in our schools personally and am told we're improving, I can't help but wonder if we were wrong to choose Mashpee as our home. I really appreciate your service to this community and I know that you didn't send the superintendent on that home visit, but like it or not, you are the ones in the position to put this matter to rest. And all this noise and discontent and unrest in our community, it has to stop. I need to know that I'm giving my kids the best opportunity for an education that I can. And right now, there are parents, just like we were, moving to the Cape, trying to decide where to live, where to raise their family. And why would anyone witnessing the drama that has unfolded around this unfortunate incident choose this place, Mashpee? Why would a family like ours, who has a choice about where they can live, choose to stay? How can anyone have confidence in our current school administration or in your ability to provide support to the district? As a resident of this town and a parent in this school district, you are my representatives. You may not have walked through the door of the King home that day, but you will be held accountable for how you handled this incident thus far and how you handle it moving forward. So as I understand it, you're here to make decisions on our behalf and you are in possession of the facts. The outcome of a criminal trial is not required for you to act. I ask that you please resolve this issue as soon as possible and move on to the business of giving our kids the very best education we can. They deserve it and the community can really no longer afford this distraction. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next item of uh, business is uh, approval of the meeting minutes of January 20, 2016. Move so to approve. <coughs> Motion by George. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Chris. Any discussion? Hearing none. Have a uh, vote, Scott? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Yes. Chris? 
George? Yes. And yes. It's approved. Next item of business is a update from our student liaison, Frederick Hanna the third. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. All right. All right. We've started term three successfully, completed term two, and all the midterms as well. I would first like to thank the administration and the staff for the different approach to the midterms this year. Last year we had two exams a day and stayed in school, but some students opted out with parental approval. This year, there was a different approach as we had one exam a day during our long block, and then we could cont continue with our learning for the rest of the day. The bonus for students was that we weren't assigned any homework in order to do well on our exams, and it certainly paid off. This term, seniors who are enrolled in the School to Career program were placed at their respective places of business. Some of the places include the Katua Fire Department, the Briar Patch Pediatrics, Cape Cod Makers, iCape Solutions, the Cape Cod Times, Mashpee Police Department, the Steamship Authority, Integra Architecture, the Mashpee Public S School Services, the Casey Coombs, and the Mashpee Public Schools IT Department. These students are all supervised under the leadership of Mr. Looney, the Department Chair of Career and Technical Pathways. We have a newly formed DECA chapter, which stands for Distributive Educational Clubs of America here at Mashpee. It prepares students for business-related competitions statewide and nationally, as well with other high schools. This group, under the leadership of Mr. Mannix, recently attended the District 1 Conference in Boston. Out of the 10 competitions that DECA was a part of, we had three top 10 finishers and one state conference qualifier. The competition consists of a written exam and two role plays in front of a panel of judges. This is a new club that offers a lot of opportunity for students to become familiar with the business world. Also, students are rehearsing for the spring production of The Wizard of Oz in March on March 18th, 19th, and the 20th. The National Honor Society is hosting another Cape Cod Healthcare Blood Drive on April 14th. The Mashpee Middle High School Student Council is collecting jeans for homeless teenagers. So drop your jeans off at Miss Vaughn's room, B205, or the main office. And Kelly Bonnenberger's senior project is a dance marathon this Saturday at the Mashpee High School from 6 to 9 p.m. We hope to see you boogie on down to <laughs> MHS. <laughs> We had many students win or place in the Cape Cod Life High School Student Art Contest. There will be a reception on Thursday, February 11th, from 4 to 6 p.m. at Mashpee Commons Business Office, where all the students' artwork will be on display. Please stop by and see the wonderful art works of art that come out of the art department. Also, this is an exciting time at the high school, as seniors are receiving college acceptance letters. And lastly, I would like to thank the school committee for your continuous support for all you do of making sure all students' needs are fulfilled and making sure all students can be successful. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? Can you show us how to boogie one more time? <laughs> <laughs> I need a lot of shade. Thank you. And now they'll have a new definition of marathon. It's three hours, right? That's right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Frederick. You're welcome. Um, we have an update on the Mashpee Middle School from uh, Prin Principal Mark Bellastracci. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, thank you for this opportunity uh, to share with you some of the great things that are taking place at Mashpee Middle High School. Uh, the best person to give this presentation tonight, I feel, is our headmaster, Ms. Rewa Melby, uh, for grades 7, 8, 9. She's done a phenomenal job of helping to improve that middle school this year, and has really brought a lot of new life and new activities and new opportunities for our students uh, as she's come into that post. So I'd like to welcome for your update, Ms. Rewa Melby, and she's accompanied by 8th grader C.J. Cliff. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and School Committee. Um, thank you for the opportunity to um, let us talk about all the exciting and fun things that we have going on at the um, middle school. 
First of all, I would like to address the DC travelers. We have currently, we just kicked off the DC travelers um, raffle tickets. As many of you may have seen in Stop and Shop, Roach Brothers, the movie theaters, everywhere, you have a table of eighth graders begging, pleading for you to spend $2 on a raffle ticket. And I would just like to take this um, moment to thank our parents, our community, our staff for supporting the raffle tickets. This is a huge opportunity for kids to go and experience our nation's capital. And um, I, I just would like to share one example. I saw a junior student um, a few days ago approaching an eighth grade student who was begging them to buy a ticket and they bought twenty dollars worth of raffle tickets because they had gone on the trip a few years ago they recognized the value of the trip what 11th grader has twenty dollars to just give to an eighth grader so that was really nice to see and um, as a result of our community support we are currently about $900 over what we anticipated last year. So our first round of raffle tickets are right about $3,000. So as we anticipate offering scholarships to families to increase the number of students who can go, this is such a great way that the community, the parents of the staff, and our students buy into this and support our kids. Um, for student government, we have a meeting coming up next week. We have a semi-formal dance coming up on March 4th, and it is a Hollywood Oscars. Um, on the red carpet, under the lights, is all about Hollywood and uh, all of that. So we're excited, we're looking forward to it. Last year we had a great turnout, um, so we're looking forward to the same. As far as athletics go, we've had a wonderful, wonderful, fantastic winter season so many great accomplishments our sports teams overall have uh, have just been phenomenal but i would like to highlight a few individual accomplishments i feel like sometimes the seventh and eighth graders get overshadowed by the high school students so i just would like to take this opportunity to mention a few students eighth grader Taz Hashi took second place in this two-mile race at the South Shore League Meet at the Reggie Lewis Center on January the 27th. She finished two miles with a time of 13 minutes and 39 seconds. I'm happy if I finish one mile <laughs> in 13 minutes and 39 seconds. And she did two miles, so great job by Tess. Eighth grader Jordan Hugh broke the Mashpee basketball record on January the 3rd. 23rd for most points scored in a quarter she scored 18 of her 27 game points during the fourth quarter very talented athlete um, the middle school boys basketball team has won six out of its seven games they played one game today Falmouth it was very close at the end I don't know what the um, outcome was but at the half it was it was, it was tight um, Many of our players at this age are hitting three-pointers. And I would just like to mention two in particular, um, Logan Westcott and Liam Burton. Each one hit three-pointers in a basketball game. So that was really fantastic for this crew. We also have a program coming up on um, March 15th. 2016. Now we're always trying to pursue, you know, college and career readiness. And too often I think it's pushed back on the high school. We really can um, start exploring our options at the earlier ages. So thanks to the guidance department, Lindsay Cat, working with in conjunction with um, Mike Looney and our senior Brittany Martini. Um, they have brought dollars for degrees, saving and paying for college. And so they are hosting Cape Cod 5 for a free educational workshop for pre-K through 8 great parents that explores valuable techniques and strategies to save, plan, and pay for higher ed. So um, we do request that you sign up. Again, that's Tuesday, March 15th here at the Quashnet Library from 6 to 7. It's a wonderful opportunity. You're never too young to start thinking about your child's future and where they're going to go to college. Um, next, 
next. I've saved the best for last. I would just like to take a moment to talk about um, this fantastic program in our state. It's called Project 351. And Project 351 is a service initiative. It was started by the Massachusetts Governor's Council in 2011. It celebrates service, leadership, and the values of kindness, compassion, humility, and the generosity of spirit. Ambassadors are expected to use the service and leadership skills they develop to address important issues facing their local communities. They are expected to demonstrate all of these while engaged in their communities in service. So throughout this year and last year, this is CJ, CJ Clip. I have observed him in a variety of environments, including classrooms, student government activities, and others. Everything I have observed is indicative of the qualities that Project 351 values. CJ is outgoing, kind, compassionate, and thoughtful. And these are the traits that truly make him a leader, not just within Mashpee, but with the school community, and then um, in his future as well. So he was the perfect representative for Project 351. And we also have a Project 351 alumni with Frederick Hanna over there. So at this time, I would just like to turn it over to CJ to talk to you about what th uh, Project 351 is and how it inspires people to find your passion and to think about what it is that connects you with life, what drives you what is going to make you really make a contribution to your community so here's CJ uh, first off I'd like to thank Miss Melby for uh, inviting me to speak about uh, this wonderful opportunity that I had last month so first off project 51 is a community service project to help get Massachusetts United and and helping our capital grow uh, it also brings a connection of students from the Cape to the western uh, state borders and help and allows them to grow and uh, know more about what might not happen at their school but in another school. Uh, so during that day, uh, along with getting to meet kids from all over the state, I had gone to work with IBA which stands for Inquilos, uh, Baracos, and Action, and uh, they're a, uh, they were founded in the, uh, about 30 years ago, and they help people around their community in, so in South Boston uh, so, uh, through acts such as uh, helping the homeless, uh, decorating uh, elders' homes and, along with the community. What we had done that day was we had filled mason jars with hot chocolate milk mix for the elders, along with painting uh, uh, murals with uh, patron saints as black civil, uh, civil rights leaders uh, to show their impact. Uh, one of these people were Martin Luther King, and we had the shadow of him against the mosaic background with one of his quotes. Uh, the shadow of him represents how he still ha he wasn't done preaching, and how his shadow and his uh, impact will affect uh, the people in the past, present, and whoever's left to come. Thank you. Okay. And what do you hope to do with the project? Uh, so, with this project, it's. Uh, we also do another one in the spring, so we're uh, planning to do either some type of food drive or a like soup kitchen uh, for the people around uh, here in uh, Dates sometime in the spring. So it's a really nice way to take community service, look at it on a state level, and then say, okay, how can we bring it home? How can we help Mashpee? And how can we really, you know, make it? A difference here. So hats off to CJ for his um, hard work with that. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Oh, he's gone. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. That's your mind. Thank you. I don't want to be held accountable for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next, next item of uh, business is uh, in regard to the investigation into the superintendent's home visit of September 29, 2015. Uh, we wanted to give an update. Um, the committee met uh, on January 28th. Uh, in executive session to review um, various information that we had received to date um, and has scheduled or will be scheduling a um, meeting on February 12th, so a week from this Friday, uh, for an executive session to uh, have further discussion and uh, ultimately make uh, hopefully uh, make a decision in regard to the status of uh, Superintendent Brian Hyde. Next item of business is um, data quest invoice. I've handed out to everyone a copy of the detail um, behind the invoices. Uh, that I had received from DataQuest. Um, this represents uh, each of the meetings, um, the various travel times that you will see uh, commuting on and off the Cape, uh, since we requested that the investigator uh, not be from uh, the Cape. Uh, and then you'll see um, administrative time that was spent um, summarizing the interviews and then also um, preparing both the draft report that was presented to the committee and then ultimately the final uh, report that was submitted to the committee. The original um, invoice for the work that was completed uh, that they submitted was for $3,439.60. Uh, after reviewing that um, and going back and discussing it with them, um, uh, in particular, the um, mileage charges that were in the original bill uh, were adjusted downward um, to the uh, current IRS um, acceptable limits, which is standard practice uh, for mileage charges. And as a result, the invoice is now $3,317.20. Any questions in regard to any of the detailed items? Um, I don't know if I have copies. Okay. Here's a copy of the invoice that I just referenced. I don't have copies. I thought I had made them, but apparently I don't uh, for each of those. So that's just summarizing uh, the detail that was provided to you. Um, and I have verified that everything in the invoice is uh, in the detailed schedule and that the totals uh, are mathematically correct. My value add. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Who can't hear me? I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Is this better? Okay. Hearing no questions um, from the committee, I need a vote or would like a vote uh, from the committee in regard to accepting the invoice uh, and authorizing um, 
Paul Funk, uh, the business manager, to pay this uh, invoice uh, for the inv uh, independent investigation uh, into uh, the events surrounding September 29, 2015, regarding Superintendent Brian Hyde. I assume we'd have to have a motion, and I was wondering if anybody would be interested in actually tabling this until after February the 12th. Uh, I'm, <clears throat> I am open to that suggestion also. Yeah, I would like to discuss this. Um, Can you repeat that? <clears throat> I'm sorry. I would uh, ask the committee if there was be any discussion if we could table this and after until after the executive session on February the 12th, as I have some things I'd like to discuss. Sure. I'll second that. Can we discuss them right here? <clears throat> no, we cannot. Okay. All right. So I have a motion on the table to... Uh, I, I don't know how much I can say. I'd like to discuss alternative payment methods. Okay. Fair enough. So uh, can I, I move we table this until after, until the next meeting after uh, the executive session on February the 12th? Second. So the next meeting is March 3rd. March 3rd. I do. Okay. Sorry. Uh, uh, all right. So we have a motion to table this to the next meeting, which would be March 3rd. And we have a second for that. Any other discussion? Will we not uh, incur a late fee? I believe we will. I was just looking at that. Um, $5 every 30 days or something like that. Um, see here, 30 days are subject to a late payment of 5% of the balance um, or $25, whichever is greater. So 25% of 3,000 is roughly what? 150. $150. Um, if it, so the committee would be. Um, What's the date for 30 days? 30 days from the date of the invoice. Um, invoice date is the 11th of January. So it'll be. Well, the new invoice, I thought it said the 26th. Is that, are that the due date? So it's 30 days past the due date? Yeah. 30 days past the due date. Which is. Uh, we're still going to be past the due date, but we're not going to be 30. Uh, yeah, we would be 30 days past the due date. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so. The committee needs to be aware of that, that there will be an additional cost. Um, that additional cost is basically almost the same as the reduction that I got in the mileage charge. So, good job. Any other discussion? Yeah, we've had the document, I mean, we've had the invoice for almost a month now, or at least 25 days, so that's, you know, I think. Mean, I think that any um, discussion could have been had in the last three weeks, but that's all I have. Okay. Any no other discussion? Take a roll call vote. Scott? This is for tabling? Yes, this, this is the motion to table until on March 3rd. No. Yes. 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 No. Three to two. Um, motion carries. This will be tabled to uh, the March 3rd meeting. Okay, thank you. Next item of uh, business is report from the superintendent. So, good evening. Can you hear me? Good evening, Chairman Myers and School Committee. I have a short statement I would like to read before um, doing my report, if that's okay. I want to address a recent quote in the Cape Cod Times which stated that the school system has been in a state of dysfunction ever since the incident. To be clear, over the past three months there has been no dysfunction at the classroom level, at the school level, or at the district office level. First, I thank the members of the school committee for their support during these past three months as my role shifted to that of acting superintendent. I have been a member of this school district for 21 years and take this responsibility very seriously. 
Second, I want to thank and recognize our district leadership team. Mashpee Middle High School Principal Mark Balistracci, Quashnet School Principal Mary Kate O'Brien, Coombs School Principal Wendy Lithwin, Special Education Director Michelle Brady, and Business Manager Paul Funk. These leaders consistently go above and beyond to ensure that our students and our teachers have what they need and that quality learning opportunities are provided to every student. Our building principals, together with other building leaders, work closely with their staffs to maintain positive and safe learning environments. Third, I thank and recognize our Mashpee Public School teachers. I visit classrooms on a daily basis and witness their efforts to provide each student with the very best learning experiences. Research has shown that the teacher in the classroom has the most significant impact or influence on student growth and achievement. Our district moving from a level three to a level two status is the direct result of the daily work of our teachers and the efforts of our students. Fourth, I thank and recognize all of our support personnel for their daily focus on fulfilling the responsibilities of their positions. These individuals consistently go above and beyond to make our schools the best. I specifically thank Gail Hannon, Ellen DeMello, Kathy Loiko, Darlene Phelan, and Jody Gallagher for the outstanding work over these past three months. Finally, I thank our students and their families. Our students only get one chance to grow up. The staff at the Mashpee Public Schools plays an important part in this process, and we take this role very seriously. Every moment of each day matters. We continually, continually strive to build and maintain strong partnerships with our families. Speaking for myself and our staff, our students always come first. Given events of recent weeks, I also want to acknowledge our bus drivers for their flexibility and support. They are valuable members of our team. Regardless of what is written in newspapers, is posted on social media, is written in letters, or is reported on the radio or television, our entire staff remains focused on providing our students with the very best possible learning experiences. We are an intelligent, highly skilled, collaborative, dedicated, and unified team striving to reach our goal of becoming a high-performing school district. We have the most amazing, intelligent, talented, and kind students for whom we are very grateful. Our work is all about our students, and for me, they will always come first. Say something before. I'd like to just add something here. As, uh, when I received the email, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, <coughs> read the newspaper account uh, of quotes attributed to uh, the town manager. I sent him an email. I copied Ms. McCormick on it. I copied Kathy Lyko actually mentioned it. I copied the school committee um, and basically said that. Uh, I, you know, read the article. I would take issue with one, and that was that this was uh, dysfunction in the school district. And I trusted that that was a misquote. And, uh, and I went through briefly what you were talking about right here. I received an email back from the town manager, and uh, he mentioned, as uh, I'm sure Ms. McCormick will verify, that he was not misquoted. That that is exactly what he said. However, when he said it, he meant the school committee and not the school district. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. OK, so we have administrative reports. From Mrs. Lithwin at the Coombs School, congratulations to art teacher Kim Palmer and to students Greenlee Davis in kindergarten, Caitlin Nash, grade one, and Willow LaJoy, grade two, whose work was presented at the Cape Cod Museum of Art in Dennis. Thank you also to Kim Palmer for organizing the Katuit Center for the Arts field trips. I think those were this week. Thank you to Katie Martin, she's the STEM teacher, for organizing crewmates and classmates and also her, her Thor Thornton Burgess visits. Meg Smith, the librarian at the Coombs School, is um, given a thank you for hosting the kindergarten pajama night. And thank yous to Susie Brooks and Colleen Terrell and Meg Smith for their support in pre presenting a technology night for, um, for our parents. Upcoming events is a, what's today, school council meeting on the 9th, right, Mrs. Lithwin? Yes. Math night is February 11th at the Coombs School. Is there anything, oh, and the other acknowledgement she included was the um, fabulous Mashpee Middle School seventh graders who have been coming to the Coombs School to complete service projects through the GREAT program. 
which is very much appreciated. One other um, addition um, that's just finally been finalized, we will be having a Zumbathon on uh, <laughs> February 26th. This is a PTO fundraiser, and all families are invited February 26th to our Zumbathon under the black lights. It should be a lot of fun. <laughs> Uh, how, how, how long is the Zumbathon? So I'm comparing that to a Dancathon. The Zumbathon is going to be from six to eight. Six to eight. Two hours for a Zumbathon. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. What, what, what day is that? That's uh, Friday, February 26th. February 26th. Okay. Thank you. So sorry. Thank you, Principal Lithwin. And for the next report, question at school principal Mary Kate O'Brien is here. She would like to acknowledge Mrs. Hill and Miss Sherman for the outstanding concert of our fourth through sixth grade band and string ensembles. She would also likewise like to thank and recognize Mrs. Terrell and Mrs. Brooks and three eighth grade students, wonderful middle school students, Tess Hatchie, Mary Hatchie, and Krista Dolan for their support at the Parent Technology Night. Quashen School is the recipient of 40 new ukuleles that were donated by Sharon Rodart. Did I say that right? A parent of a former student, she won the ukuleles and listed Quashen as her school of choice to receive them. And Mrs. O'Brien would like to thank her on behalf of the students and music teachers who will put the instruments to good use. DJ Uch, how do you say the last name? Uch. Okay. DJ Uch was a big hit with students in delivering an assembly on kindness, and this was sponsored by the very fabulous Quashnet School PTO. Thank you to sixth grade teacher Elizabeth Babbage, who is also the National Elementary Honor Society, Advi Society Advisor for her work in preparing a wonderful Quashnet School Elementary Honor Society induction ceremony, and to all the student scholars inducted for their hard work and dedication. I'm going to read the names, because I think it's important. Autumn Bailey, Sadie Beal, Jocelyn Cohen, Maya Brainson, Jillian Burge, William Chapman, Colton Colloran, Jacob DeFrancesco. Ava DeSimone, Ryan Flaherty, Braden Frazier, Emerson Frazier, William Henley, Ava Kelly, Annika Lakatos, Maria McDonald, Katrina Mayen, Catherine O'Neill, Robert O'Neill, Daisy O'Reilly, Stellis Desay, Maria Strom, Lily Swift, Mateo Vasquez, Sean Ware, and Kaylin Westgate. Congratulations to these new inductees. Upcoming on Mrs. O'Brien's list of events for February is the Water Festival on the 11th. That is a wonderful um, opportunity for our fifth graders to learn. And STEM night at the Quashnet School is the 25th of February. Mrs. O'Brien, would you like to add anything? We do have the great program beginning on the 23rd of February for our fifth grade students. And Mr. Myers, we expect you at the STEM night the night before Zumba. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I think I need a new calendar. <laughs> Next up, we have the Mashpee Middle High School report with Principal Balistracci is here. He would like to recognize Mr. Trianos and Ms. Keller and all of our student mus musicians for their great performances at the Winter All Band and All Choral e events. They were wonderful. Thank you to MMHS staff and to the Mashpee students and families for making the program of Studies Open House a great event. It was a great experience to share the unique and innovative programs with students, families, and members of the community. There are some high five award winners, and I would like to read those names as well. Grade seven, Maggie Conley, Evan McLaughlin, Sean Smith, Ben Johnson, Gavin Emerson. Grade eight, Phoebe Cohen, Cashette Bonfleck, Cole Lorig, Maddie Souza, Cole Lorig, and Adriana DeSimone. Grade nine, Taj Bowen, Tiana Peters-Williams, Sarah McNamara, Michael Jaquillo, Sarah McNamara again, and Ben Hudson. Grade 10, Josh McEnroe, Dan Danielle Shea, Michael Frazier, Josh McEnroe also, again, Miranda Govea and Michael Frazier. So we had two twofers in grade 10. Mm -hmm. Grade 11, Josh and Chopra, Jordan Schmiel Schmelzer, Alexander Franklin, Cassidy O'Hara, Thomas McPhee, and Alexander Franklin. He had ELA and foreign language. And then grade 12, Kayla Paltz, Shannon McGovern, Allison O'Keefe, Julian Terry, Jason Demers, and Lindsay Barrow. So congratulations to these students for being recognized for that effort. Would you like to add anything? Uh, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. We have the report from Special Ed Director Michelle Brady, who is also here this evening. Um, you can see there that we currently have 337 students who are receiving 
specialized services. And then there's a list of the events that Mrs. Brady has attended and her strong community connections. Would you like to add anything? Um, just that we're having our next CPAC meeting for parents and anyone that's interested on basic rights and procedural safeguards for parents and students. That would be Thursday, March 10th at 6 30. And the um, last page of the school main office. Thank you. We also have in the packet the report from Athletic Director Matt Treveri. And just to read some of his notes, freshman Mashby goalie Jack Daniel re recorded two straight shutouts, made 65 straight saves. The Falmouth Mashby, Mashby Gymnastics set a points record in a loss to Barnstable, but they scored 143.75, and Barnstable is the state champion. Eighth grade girls. Varsity basketball player Jordan Hugh, which you heard Miss Melby speak of tonight, she set a record by scoring 18 points in a quarter. Wow. The previous record for points in a quarter was held by Billy Bellady and Dennis Gorsica at 16 points. Hugh is the leading girls scorer in the South Shore League small schools. Excellent. And I forgot to mention that um, next. I think it's next Tuesday, the 9th, is Indian Ed Parent Committee meeting at 6:30 at Mashby Middle High School. Anyone have any questions on the administrator reports? Okay, personnel report. Brenna Forsberg has been hired as a sixth grade teacher. She was a long-term sub for a person out on maternity who is not coming back this year, so she is more official at this point. And we received notice of a retirement. It's not until the end of the school year for James Kratia, a science teacher at the high school. That's an end of the year retirement. The enrollment sheet shows that we have 446 students at the Coombs School, 508 students at the Quashnet School, 277 students at the Mashby Middle School, and 434 students at the Mashby High School, a total of 1665, which is an increase of one. All right, any uh, questions? No? Okay. Thank you. And the last part of my report included in your packet is some data related to the recently released educator performance evaluation ratings from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. And what you have in your packet shows st data at the state level and then our district level and then for each school. And just to caution in terms of how people interpret this information, it's not meant to be comparative between districts. There's a lot of collaboration going on, not only within districts, inter-district, but intra-district. And some districts have made the decision that no teacher or administrator would earn an exemplary rating, and it was negotiated with their um, unions. Mashby is not in that position. However, to earn an exemplary overall rating, a teacher not only has to demonstrate a certain level of expertise within her cl his or her classroom, but also be able and willing and demonstrate that they model it for their peers. Um, so there's just information in there for you to digest. At the end of this year, in addition to a summative rating, which is what you see here, teachers will also um, receive a an impact rating in terms of their impact on student learning and there has to be two years worth of student growth data in order to make that determination and that piece of information only determines um, the type of plan that a teacher these two pieces of information together, their summative rating and their impact on student learning are combined to determine the type of plan they end up on. So what sort of um, takeaway should the committee be um, arriving at in looking at this data then? Well, initially in June, or maybe it was July, we had some preliminary data on this. And I know that we went back to 
look at all of our records, which are kept in an online program called Teach Point, you should see 100% in every category being evaluated. So you'll notice that Coombe School, good job, has 100% in all their categories. Quashnet School does not show 100%, but having been there, I would ha I'm, I'm surprised at this because we did evaluate everyone. But in looking at some of the backup for the information, there were a couple people who were included in what was fed up to the state. One was a long-term sub and one was out on leave, so I'm not even sure why they would have been included. So sometimes not the best data always gets put up there. We had a chance to fix some things, which I thought we did, but those ones weren't ones we looked at. So you do want to see 100% in the evaluation, and you want to see a shift over time, if you were looking at this data from year to year, where you see a gradual shift in the columns. So the needs improvement are expected to, to eventually be proficient. Unsatisfactory would shift over or else they end up shifting out. Okay. So, hmm. so the overall results, just looking within our schools, um, any surprises? Probably the biggest surprise for me, and I'm not sure, and it was my school last year, is there seems to be a high percentage who scored exemplary, and that means their overall rating would have to be exemplary. I know that in each of the rating categories, people might have received some exemplaries, and then it was basically a judgment if you had more exemplaries than proficient, you ended up exemplary. Um, I would have been responsible for half of the evaluation, certain grade levels, and the assistant principal at the time, the other half. So personally, for me, I'd be, why is Quashen have so many exemplary? Not that I didn't hire well, I will say that. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> And, you know, we weren't frivolous in giving out whatever evaluations. That does seem high to me, though, so I would wonder about that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, through the chair, yes. is there any way to determine how many of the teachers' non-professional status, which is, I believe, which is the category of individuals who are three years or less, how many of those, can we figure out how many of those are in the needs improvement column? And is it, are we making up as a majority of our uh, needs improvement, or is it persons that are already have professional status? Do you know that answer? We have the actual uh, summative rating for every teacher. Mm -hmm. It's you could not. It is not just non-professional status teachers who end up in needs improvement. If a teacher with professional status ends up with needs improvement, they are put on a plan specifically targeting the areas of deficit and monitored. But we do have that information. But that would not be publicly released. And I guess the same would go for unsatisfactory. Absolutely. Unsatisfactory, if you're non-professional and you're unsatisfactory, you probably are not asked back. You'd have Thank to you. be pretty bad to be there. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Next item of business, um, under new business, uh, Mass School Building Authority, approval of an application uh, for a statement of interest. And and this, the, the town, the, the state has put out uh, a deadline of February 12th for districts to put in a statement of interest for certain types of projects. The window project at the Quashnet School would qualify for consideration within this accelerated program. So this memo, which is coming from Catherine Laurent, the DPW director, is requesting the school committee to approve, which they must do in a, you must read this next part out loud. Okay. They would have to sign off on indicating their support. The selectmen have to sign off as well for the statement of interest to be submitted specific to, it's specific to the window project here at the Quashnet School. And at this point, there's no funding commitment required by the town. So in the, the page 18 of the packet, oh, you probably have the original. 
Um, no, I don't. I just have a copy. Okay. Well. Oh. Okay. You have to read that out loud. Okay. <coughs> Any, um, any questions before I read the, the resolution um, that we would need to uh, vote on uh, in regard to what we're trying to accomplish here? Uh, just to clarify, I mean, it looks like it's they're looking to seek a grant and they need approval by the school committee and selectmen to start the process of seeking that grant out. Yeah. That, okay. that, yeah. If we don't ask, we don't have any shot of getting it. Got you. Any, any other questions before I go through the resolution? Hearing none. We resolve having convened an open meeting on February 3rd, 2016, the school committee of the town of Ashby, in accordance with its charter, bylaws, and ordinances, has voted to authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the statement of interest form dated February 12, 2016, for the Quashnet School, located at 150 Old Barnstable Road, Mashby, Massachusetts, 02649, which describes and explains the following deficiencies in the priority categories for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. Priority five, replacement, renovation, or modernization of school facility systems such as roofs, windows, boilers, heating and ventilation systems to increase energy conservation and decrease energy related costs in a school facility as determined in the judgment of the authority. The project is replacement of windows throughout the school. The windows are original to the building's construction in 1978. There is significant air leakage around the windows. The steel frames are eroded and rusted, and the seals have failed, trapping moisture between the glass panes. The resulting heat loss has resulted in higher energy costs to sustain a minimum level of comfort for students and staff and hereby specifically acknowledges that by submitting this statement of interest form, the, to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant, or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, or commits the city, the town, or regional school district to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Do I have a motion to approve this resolution as read? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Scott? Aye. Yes. 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 Is there an original that I have to sign? Well, um, or just this? Uh, <coughs> no. That's it. That's it. All right. Well, it's official. Thank you. All right. Next item of business is in regard to preschool start times for 2016-17 school year. And we are looking for a vote on that. I believe this came up at the last meeting. I move to accept the preschool start times as presented. Second. Do I have discussion? Um, can you please, um, for at least the audience's um, edification, uh, indicate what the new start times would be? So the new start time for the full day program of preschoolers at the Casey Coon School will go from 9 a.m. and end the day at 2.50 the same time. So it's a 9 a.m. start is what you would be voting for. That's the change from current. Effective next school year. Effective in the 16-17 school year. Correct. Okay. Any other discussion? 
Anyone? Scott? Aye. Yes. 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 Yes, that's unanimous. Thank you. Next item of business is subcommittee reports. Uh, K through eight universal summer program. Uh, Ms. Boer is going to give you an update. Currently, we have a parent survey out to all of our K to eight families seeking their input on into the planning process for a universal summer school program. Currently our sc summer school program is an extended school year program for students who have special needs and have been shown to meet certain criteria. Pretty much the priority one is that they sh have shown a regression in skills when there is a gap during learning time. This program would be open to all students whether they are special ed or not and it would be for students who at the end of the school year meet certain criteria, basically that they are not at the place that they should be so that we would be better able to prepare them for the start of the following year and sort of give them a, a which may be something down the road. So we're gonna continue to collect the data, probably have um, a couple of focus groups, meet with the school councils and decide a monetary um, budget that would go with the program that seems to be most of interest to parents. Most parents indicate they would not need transportation and if they do sign up they would plan on being participating 100%. Wow. Yeah. Mm. All right. So it's so it's, it's <coughs> exciting. So, sounds like um, it's off to a good beginning as far as uh, getting feedback from uh, everyone and uh, I would again encourage people take a few minutes fill it out provide your feedback mrs. Brady would you like to add anything to no, I was just wondering, so far is there a preferred um, you know? uh, in terms we offered about six different options for laying out the summer program and it's really coming out pretty even <laughs> it's not going to be that helpful um, so we'll see how that goes. Then we will have to make sure we, we really um, explore the staffing side of this plan. Yeah, I think that'll be that the big, be big potential challenge. And a possible heat element. <laughs> okay, thank you for that update. Any uh, questions? Okay, more to come on this uh, in the future. Next item of business is policy subcommittee. Uh, we have a second reading of uh, policy JF, school admission. Um, and you have that in your packet. Not really much to say. It's uh, It was changed the way we discussed it during the last meeting. Um, me personally, I'm still comfortable with the way it's written. All right. And the, the change here is really defining uh, the terms regarding res residency uh, in Mashpee. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm a little concerned about um, over overstating what our intent is. We, I think the idea is to have mastery residents, but you know, this italicized addition talks about the wording is residency is defined as actually residing with a mastery resident who is the legal parent guardian, legal parent and guardian during the days and evenings of the days that school is in session. I mean, I think that the appropriate term might be Mashby dwelling with a Mashby resident. I mean, we, you know, we could um, insert words in here 35 different ways, um, but I don't want to leave any gaps here where someone could say, I'm a Mashby resident. Um, however, currently I'm not living in Mashby. However, this student must attend your school. I, you know, I think I would prefer that we uh, kept the admission policy as it were. Um, we didn't seem to have any problems with it, and it seems to be 
Uh, no one seems to dispute that policy JF. It seems to be universal in every school in the Commonwealth. <clears throat> Any other comments? I don't know how to respond to that since this is the third time we've talked about it and every time there's something new to discuss. Um, but the first line of pol policy JF says a, school, a child of school age who reside in the town. And all the attempt was to do was to clarify what reside in the town means. So there's no confusion. If they, again, I will defer to the Democratic if the committee says that that uh, determines that that definition is not required. I'm trying to alleviate future issue. You know. I mean, I respect the uh, initiative, uh, but I just feel we're over clarifying. You know, I mean, we could add a, a blurb to every policy, not every policy. Um, in our manual. But, you know, I'm more than welcome to have the vote. Other, other comments or discussion? I move to approve as second read. I'm sorry, to accept as second read. Second. Any further discussion? Yes. Um, has this now. Uh, some people might be upset with me for saying this, but have you run this by council, Mr. Chairman? I believe this was yes. run by council originally, yes. When was this? I mean, uh, you know, in the last, this was uh, last presented um, in January, isn't that correct? Uh, the reason I bring it up is because as when I was chair, I did not submit this because I did not have the uh, time to do so. Um, I was removed from the position, and so I didn't uh, sign it. So I, I want to know if it has been looked at, at by council since then. That's my question. Um, it, it has not been looked at council since um, the last meeting, no. Well, that, what I'm getting at is I think it's, you know, we have, we have new wording since that last meeting. Is that correct? The last meeting we created new wording. Maybe I'm incorrect on that. I, I have no issue. I mean, just being, and I just moved to accept that as the second reading. I have no issue with it being um, put forth to council because we know that putting things in front of council make things move so much faster. So, Scott, are you making a motion to um, table the vote until uh, it has been submitted by council? I just would, you know, what I'm saying is if it's going to be a uh, final approval, I would probably object, but I would suggest that uh, to protect all interests that the committee uh, run it by council and <coughs> actually um, you know, we'll see him in person in next Friday. So, again, uh, I just moved to accept. So, if uh, between now and the next time that we move to approve the third read, I have no issue with it going to council. As a matter of fact, I'll be happy to send it to you. Does it require a third read? Does it? No, we are not voting on it tonight. We're not voting on the policy. We're just voting as a mm. second read. Yeah. All right. It's already seconded. Yeah. Any other comments, then? All right, so the motion on the table is to approve the second read. Uh, to accept as second read. Uh, ex to accept as second read the uh, school mission uh, policy uh, amendment as presented. Scott? So that's not final approval, right? It's not no. final. No. Aye. Yes. 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 And yes. <coughs> So we will um, submit this to the um, okay. to council for his uh, review and bring that um, back to the committee at the uh, March uh, 3rd meeting. Okay. Next item is second read 
for policy IF regarding multi-tiered system of support framework for improving the educational performance of all students. I move to accept a second read. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote? Scott? Aye. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Second read is approved. So come back for final approval. Uh, one thing, Mr. Chairman, we said I think the 3rd of March, and actually the next uh, meeting is the 2nd of March. It's a Wednesday night. Okay. Just for correction for the record. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. All references to the 3rd get changed to the 2nd. Thank you. As a administrative oversight. I have said it. Uh, all right. I have a couple of other subcommittee. Yeah, I was going to say, work. yes, uh, other subcommittee reports? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the wellness uh, subcommittee met today. We have a revised athletic concussion policy. Uh, it has to, it was approved by the wellness committee. Uh, it also is a policy, so I don't know how you want to work this, have a special policy meeting for it, or if you would yeah, like sure. to read it. And, okay, what, okay. Absolutely, yeah. we'll set up a, a special, not a special, we'll set up a policy <laughs> committee meeting uh, to go over it. It's mainly words uh, changing to bring it up to date, uh, clarification, and bringing it up to the latest uh, state regulations is okay. what these changes are all about. We've also had some um, uh, action, if you will, in the recovery area. Uh, Principal Balistracci, along with three of his staff and I, went up to uh, Rockland on this past week, Monday, thank you, uh, and to get trained in the exhibit called Hidden in Plain Sight. Uh, this is an exhibit that will be coming to Mashpee the 20th, the, uh, it will be available from the 24th of April until the 2nd of May. That doesn't mean it's going to be shown, but that's just when the uh, equipment will be available. For those of you who are not familiar with it, it's a teenage bedroom uh, set up as you might find any teenage bedroom, except it looked a lot neater. <laughs> and in there, there's some uh, 70 items uh, which could be identification markers that your child might be drinking or using substances. Uh, there's also a little bit of educational seminar after that that will be happening uh, at the week of April 24th. We also are going to have the Recovery High School is coming uh, to visit. Recovery High School, there are four of them in the states. The uh, students there are in recovery. That's one of the requirements. They have to be clean and sober while there, and they are coming down here to make a presentation to our 7th and 8th. Thank you, 7th and 8th grades, sometime in the time frame uh, late March to early April. We also have a Karen organization, which uh, our Principal um, O'Brien is working on. Uh, this is an education program for the 6th grade as far as drug addiction, uh, no, I'll take that back, as far as addiction is concerned. And they are working on getting that incorporated into the program. And I don't know if I'm the finance committee, but uh, we are going uh, tomorrow <coughs> evening to the finance committee, uh, Mr. Funk and Mr. Boer and myself, uh, to present the school budget for questions and approval, hopefully, by the finance committee. And what's, oh, that's the, uh, the article we just talked about. Okay. Um, okay. Acting superintendent, Mr. Boer spoke about. So I'm done. All right. Any other uh, subcommittees? No? Not at this point? Okay. Um, events and happenings? I think we hit most of them. Is there anything that we missed, principals? No, there is not. All right. Um, I'd like to make a motion to add an item to the uh, agenda uh, in regard to um, the liaison assignments. Moved. I'm not sure I want to. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be a little more specific. Yeah, I'd um, like to discuss um, 
um, changing um, uh, liaison assignments. All of them? Um, no, I, I have one in particular okay. that I would like to talk about. I have a second. Do I, um, can I have a vote for, uh, to add this to the agenda? Aye. Yes. 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 Um, I'd like to um, change the um, liaison assignment for the Indian education. Um, I've received a request um, that we make a change um, due to uh, potential conflicts and um, currently, um, so I'm looking to reassign that um, to someone. Uh, currently, Scott McGee is um, the school committee representative uh, for that uh, committee. Any discussion? <coughs> I'd like to discuss it. <coughs> it appears that the director of the Indian Education Program doesn't want me to, as a member of, uh, of that committee, uh, the liaison to that committee. I made some uh, sarcastic remarks to her, to the director last meeting about wanting to help her gather signatures, and she felt that was a threatening. Um, she felt that was threatening in some way. I don't understand why Miss Riley doesn't understand sarcasm. If she doesn't want me there, that's. Uh, her decision, uh, but that doesn't mean I have disagreements with people, and there wasn't even a disagreement, it was snark, uh, sarcasm, and I think we're all adults here, and Mr. Santos was standing right there and saw the sarcasm. There was no threatening um, actions, there was no threatening words. Uh, there were two reporters that were sitting here in this room that saw it. There was nothing threatening about it, and they even mentioned in the article that it was sarcasm. You know, so if this committee wants to throw me out, go ahead and throw me out. Have your vote. Someone else can go. Any other comments? Is this a request by the committee? Is it a request by the individual? Is it a request by what? what it's a request by Carla Riley who wants oh. to assert authority over this committee. That's what it is. Has there been feedback from any other members of the uh, education, Trump education? No, there hasn't. How many members are on the board, please? That board? Um, there are four officers. The last meeting that we had, there were probably 10 people in attendance, maybe 11. And Patty can attest that, you know, I don't. Um, you know, I act in a professional manner. Wherever I go, I gave some snark to uh, a lady, and if she doesn't like it, then you have to understand that people are sometimes sarcastic. I was in a, not in a good mood that night. I'm really not in a good mood tonight. But I'm still be able to handle myself in a professional manner. Happy vote. Well, what I will say about that is I did hear those comments, and, you know, I'm not going to uh, speculate whether it was sarcasm. No, it could have been, but I'm not going to read anybody's mind and tell you whether or not it was sarcasm, but... Um, well, it was an offer of help. If it wasn't sarcasm, it was an offer for help. I said, I would like to help you get your signatures. You can't uh, twist the words that came out of my mouth. I didn't... That's not a threatening uh, sentence. If we want to have a comedy of errors here, we can continue to have comedy <coughs> errors. We can just continue to do our work. Do we have a... Uh, This is a committee that we only have one representative on, correct? Yes. I mean, do you think that, that there should actually be a discussion between uh, Carla and Mr. McGee before this happens? I, I mean, yeah, it seems I, like quite the surprise all of a sudden coming up to that. Yeah. I would think that that should be the order of business. Um, before we would make a change. Um, That's assuming that she will, though. Uh, we can. No, we tried. 
the chair will reach out and try to facilitate a, a meeting between uh, Mr. McGee and her. Um, prior to the meeting on the, the 9th, right? So move to table. I'll move to table. Do I have a second for that motion? Is that the table if it wasn't even on the agenda? No, we've added it to the agenda. Did we? Yeah. Uh, we just Second. Oh. All right. uh, before we vote on it, I just do want to say one thing, and I agree that maybe we should wait, and um, you know, there's no hurry on it. So, you know, so committee, we can send anybody if we really need to, or you right. know, Scott can go. And but the well, meeting's uh, on the 9th, Mr. Santos. Okay. Of February. What, what I will I will caution on is, you know, just please be careful when you know any, anybody's dealing with anybody in the public because even if we think it's not I have a freedom of speech if I want to be I understand that, but and she's I'm more it. sarcastic with all four of you guys all right I understand I just want to make it clear and this is not directed just at you this is everybody I mean if you you got to be cognizant of what people are going to perceive of you so just you know if somebody takes offense to something then they have every right to take offense to it as well, well. I'm, I'm going to uh, you know, call the vote 20 frowns a day but I don't do anything about it I'm going to call the vote Scott how do you vote Aye. to table yes 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 and yes we will table that and bring it up uh, if necessary um, at the next meeting is there any other business to be brought forth to the school committee tonight Oh, yes, we need to add one more item. So, um, received an email um, from the town clerk late this afternoon. I'd like to add this uh, to the agenda. It's in regard to a request um, surrounding uh, closing the school on March 1st, 2016 which is the uh, presidential primary uh, date. So I make a motion to uh, add that to the agenda. Do I have a second? Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor to add this to the agenda? Aye. Yes. 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 Any others? Let me um, just read the um, correspondence that was received this afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Chairman Myers. In speaking with George Brennan of the Cape Cod Times yesterday, he advised me of a letter that the town clerk from the town of Sandwich, Taylor White, had sent to the school committee requesting that the co committee consider closing schools on March 1st for the presidential primary. However, when I spoke with Mr. White earlier today, he informed me that it was the school committee, based on a prior conversation with himself, that had decided to call a quote-unquote snow day on March 1, 2016. At their meeting, Taylor informed the school committee members of the unusually high volume of voter registration that is currently taking place in Sandwich. This time, I'd like to advise you that this office has registered approximately 100 new voters in the last two weeks. Do you think that the school, the Mashpee School Committee would consider voting to add this item to your agenda tonight? because it's something that needs to be addressed before our next meeting, and perhaps consider having a snow day on March 1st. Because we are electing a new president this year versus re-electing a currently seated president, turnout volumes are always higher than normal. In 2008, voter turnout for the presidential primary was 4,423, which is 41% of the voters in Mashpee versus 1,784 or 18% in 2012. Con appreciate the school committee's consideration in this matter. Signed, Debbie Damey, Mashpee Town Clerk. Any um, question? I, were you um, principal this at that point in time or get the question? I have been principal during a presidential election. Was there any difficulty having a presidential primary election or whatever we're doing primary to? Well, it's primary. every election presents challenges when it is a school day. There will be more people, I presume. 
I'm concerned, I believe dates for voting are well planned prior to, my problem is that a year ago when we developed the calendar for 15, 16, or, or even further back than a year, this date would have been a known date, I believe, that the, the town could have communicated to the schools. I know I personally am not in favor of a snow day on March 1st. I don't believe any of our principals are. We would not just close the Quashnet School. It would be the entire district. That could also put a burden on families who may not have planned for that. I hope that extra precautions would be put in place on March 1st because of the expected heavy volume. I know that we are having school on the May town election day, which got moved to a Tuesday. 17th. The 17th. Maybe won't be as widely attended, but for this March 1st date, I would prefer that schools remain open and extra precautions would be put in place and extra protocols to ensure student safety. Thank you. I, I did um, try to reach out to the town clerk to ask her um, you know, if we did um, go ahead and have school that day, um, whether the, her office or the town would uh, be providing additional um, traffic mitigation support to um, help ensure that people are getting in and out um, efficiently and uh, not blocking uh, entrances, etc. cetera. Um, I did not hear back. Um, this email that I received along with um, acting uh, Superintendent DeBoer was received at 4.04 this afternoon, so um, it was a little challenging for us to act uh, on a timely basis back to it, and given obviously that this is our only meeting uh, prior to that date, we wanted to bring it forth as uh, uh, expeditiously for the uh, committee to consider. Um, personally, personally, I, I I think we can make it work in regard to um, still having school and uh, carrying on an election. Um, I think the town can so help support that. Um, I would hope that um, our selectmen liaison in the back of the room um, can help facilitate uh, support from the town manager and um, uh, DPW or police, uh, whoever else is necessary to help ensure that uh, the election is carried out uh, in an efficient and effective manner uh, that's safe for both the uh, voters and uh, for our students. Uh, other thoughts? George? Chris? No, I agree. I mean, I leave it up the educators, and if uh, the acting superintendent is fine with it, and the principals what's remaining open, I'm fine with it. Yeah. <coughs> Pretty much the way, same way. I mean, if we had a little more notice and could yeah. collect a little more data, then I'd feel a little more comfortable changing school days <coughs> on that. But if we just don't have that information, it's kind of yeah. <laughs> it took us an hour and a half or so before the meeting. I, you know. Um, I, I'm not going to go against the recommendation of the people that work in these buildings every day, so um, I think it's the right move to stay the same. Um, um, act, um, Patricia DeBoer will know that there's a concerted effort to tape off that central uh, main office uh, corridor and then the rear corridor uh, and then have some kind of security whether it be uniformed or staff that stands there and directs people away from the main corridors and towards the gymnasium and then there's also a separate entrance into the gymnasium and the only problem that I see that we've had before is that we've had logistical problems with the amount of staff vehicles in the parking lot and you know I don't know how maybe the town can help us you know maybe the everyone could park at another building and then be shuttled to their cars and back and forth I don't, you know I don't know how that but that seems to be the biggest problem you know please uh, um, just observing the current parking lot at the question school since it's been since it has been redone there are quite a few open spots I do believe that some of the staff could probably park closer to this end um, and still facilitate the quick in and out of that voting I always was concerned there are always 
campaigners that need to sort of be channeled into one area. We do have the buses that come to the back of the building, so that's better than it was in prior years or prior presidential elections. We still have parents who drop off in the front, so we could direct those students possibly to come in a different door. Um, as long as there is an additional police officer who's posted at the front door of the Quashant School, separate from the police officer that ensures the integrity of the election, it works better. But we are used to having a very tight, secure building, so it does put everybody a little bit on edge that day. Yeah, we were aware of this when we set the calendar back in January, you know, and the idea was that we uh, previously had, you know, tightened up the uh, security and made sure that we had a good flow of people and traffic. And so I know it's going to be a higher up turn, uh, turnout, but I think we can do two things at once. I mean, I, I think um, one, one thing since, um, you know, there is, since the Quashnet Gymnasium is um, the best place that we currently have available uh, to hold the uh, townwide elections, um, I think a concerted effort should be put forth um, maybe um, jointly by the um, the selectmen and the school committee to really look at um, a potential redesign of the entranceway to the gymnasium to facilitate, I believe the issue is that they need a double door uh, into the gymnasium so that if that existed, um, <coughs> then people could go through that and we would be able to secure the uh, inside doors um, to the rest of the school. Um, and I believe the there are restrooms available in the locker rooms, is that right? Or uh, there are restroom facilities that are available in there? I, I, you're laughing because it must not be great, but... We, we need to take the field trip back there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are working bathrooms. Okay, so the working bathrooms. So, um, to me, given that this is not going to get resolved any times in the near future, um, that would make the most sense um, so that we can facilitate being able to accommodate these and be able to uh, ensure uh, the security of uh, our student population and you know, if we have a, a separate interest that they, the voters can use, maybe we won't need to uh, incur expense of having a separate uh, detail officer at the building door. Um, but I, I would ask uh, Ms. Stuckman to take a look at that as potentially uh, something to do. And just for the record, the November actual election is a professional day in the district, so the school will be closed in November. All right. And the other, one more thing, we also have MCAS coming up later that month. I mean, we would lose a day, wouldn't we, of um, preparation? Mrs. O'Brien, did you tell me that there was any testing that in March? We do have our testing in May. May. Oh, it's in March May. March this year, yes. Okay. So it, I did have to adjust the testing for science MCAS. It was originally scheduled for May 17th and 18th, so I postponed that to the 18th and 19th. And that's for our fifth grade students only. I have just one other piece. I have been in touch with Chief Carline of the Nashville Police Department, and he has graciously said he will send um, a uniformed officer over for the school side on that election day, as well as an officer that's on the voting floor. So that day we will have two officers in the building. Okay. All right. So do I have a motion um, to respond back to the town clerk <laughs> indicating that we appreciate her request. However, um, we feel that um, it best suits the, in, the, um, the needs of our student, uh, students for them to be in class uh, on March the 1st. Second. Any more discussion in regard to that motion? Scott, how do you vote? Aye. Yes. 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 Okay, it's unanimous. Um, 
I will respond back to that. Um, any other business that we need to bring forth to the committee for action tonight? I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor, Scott? Aye. Yes. 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 Yes.